interrupted. The father is in so much pain. His heart is being torn out. His daughter is dying. He saw Jesus. He fell down, collapsed before Jesus. He begged. She is dying. She's at the point of death. She may not make it. My little girl is leaving me. He begged. Come, don't tarry. Please hurry. Come quickly. Please touch her. Please place your hands on her. Please heal her. Please make her well. Please let her live. We don't know what to do. Why won't she get better? Where is the cure we were promised? Treatment after treatment, blood transfusion, stem cells, antibiotics, medicines with so many side effects, surgery, radiation, chemo. She is near death. They tried everything. Her body is so tired. She can't take anymore. No more pills, no more surgery, no more hospitals. She said no more. She is near death. And I can't let go. I can't stop hoping for a miracle. I can't stop researching the latest scientific breakthrough. I can't stop crying for her. I have to be strong. I have to be tough. I have to do what is right, what is best. She is near death. She is near death. They tried everything. Her body is so tired and she can't take anymore. And I can't let go. I can't stop hoping for a miracle. She's near death. I want to hope. I run outside to meet that hope. And I see Jesus. I fall down kneeling on the ground and beg my daughter. My daughter. My daughter is at the point of death. I choke back the deep wailing inside that wants to break out. Come and lay your hands on her. Come and touch her. Make her well. Make her whole. Bring her back to me. Interrupted. Jesus sets out to help, but the crowds press around him. Jesus sets out to help, but he is stopped repeatedly with requests. Jesus sets out to help, but a woman waylays him. If I but touch him, I will be made well. Bleeding for 12 years. And I couldn't talk about it. It was a woman's problem. At times so weak, I couldn't move. Left out of so much because I was perpetually unclean. I tried everything. If there was an herb that might somehow, some way stop bleeding, I gathered it. I went to the doctor in my village, the midwife, the crone. I went to the next doctor. I spent everything I had on a cure. Nothing worked. Sometimes it made me worse, increased the bleeding, made me dizzy, caused me to be weak. A neighbor said, have you heard about Jesus? He comes into town and says repent and he preaches about love and forgiveness. When he comes into town, people are healed. The diseases they have are gone. They are made well, they are whole again. You know, he's coming into town today. If I but touch him, I'll be made well. I came up behind him in the crowd. I thought if I but touch him, I will be made well. So I touched his cloak. The bleeding stopped. I felt my body be healed. Can you imagine what it's like to finally be well, to feel whole again? He started to look around. I knew he was looking for me. He knew that I was better. He said, who touched my clothes? His friend said, have you seen the crowds? Everyone is touching you. He said again, who touched me? I knew he meant me. 
I approached him with my head down. I fell to my knees there before him. I was scared, but I told him. I told him of the bleeding and the doctors and the money and the hope. I told him my story. He called me daughter. He called me daughter. I was part of the family, welcome in the community. He said my faith made me well. He told me to go in peace. He said be healed of your disease. If I but touch him, I will be made well. He gave me back my life. He restored me. He didn't just cure me. He transformed what I had been to what I could be. He made me whole. Interrupted. A family member runs up. She is dead. I make that sound. That agony in your soul. I wasn't with her. How could I not have been with her? How could I have left? I thought there was time. Interrupted. Do not fear. Only have faith. She will be saved. She is just sleeping. Come. How can I not be afraid? All that potential, all the dreams melting away, sliding into the darkness. I cry again as we enter the room. I fall down. I touch her. Interrupted. Do not weep. He takes her hand, he touches her so gently. He speaks so kindly, child, get up. Little girl, get up. I let out another cry as she sits up, stands up, calls my name. She is well, she is whole, she is saved. My little girl is alive. Interrupted. How do we talk about how God works in our lives? This story shows us so many interruptions, right? That Jesus is coming to town and somebody comes to meet him, asks a favor or request. And he's interrupted. He's interrupted because someone else has a need. I like to think of these as spirit interruptions. When I walk my dog, the spirit often interrupts. One time in particular that I remember is I'm walking, hiking Casper Mountain, okay? So you go by the waterfall and you're going up the side and there's a favorite spot where I could sit and pray and meditate and move on and that dog was really good. She would just lie down and say, oh good, a rest. And when I open my eyes and start walking again, out of the blue, because this is the middle of the week. When you're a pastor, you can go when nobody's around on the mountain, right? A woman shows up and starts telling me her story. The spirit guided that woman to interrupt my walk so that she had someone who could share her story with so she could share her pain and her life, so she could share what was going on. Interrupted. Dog walks are great for interruptions. Because if you happen to pass by the people that are in your congregation, they interrupt because they need that experience of knowing that someone is there to hear the story and to pray with them. Interruptions. How is our life like that, our faith journey? In this story, we have two daughters. 
an adult daughter who's been pushed out of the community, separated from all the people that should be caring for her. Jesus interrupts that separation and brings her back into wholeness and into community and calls her daughter. At the same time, there's another daughter, a child, a little girl, who is also made well. Interrupted. I thought about this in terms of how many of us in COVID times really miss getting hugged? Do you remember when you used to walk in church and the pastor would envelop you with a hug? And it's been interrupted. That normal everyday touch that we used to experience all the time is now rife with interruptions. We don't shake hands anymore. We don't hug anymore. And yet that touch is sometimes the most important thing you can do. When you visit someone in the hospital, to put your hand on them may be the only comfort they have gotten in a while. That sense that someone else cares, that someone else is there and present, that touch that makes them realize that they are still alive and whole. And yet our lives have been interrupted. We have been interrupted. I think about how right at the moment I'm singing apocalyptic songs all the time. Right? Those songs that it's the end of the world as you know it. Because it seems like every time you turn the news on, something interrupts what you thought was a calm, peaceful kind of day because you had gone out and picked the flowers or just sat there in your yard and smelled. Who knew lemon trees bloomed again? And yet you're interrupted by the news. I mean, who thought that our government would wake up in the middle of the night if you're in Pennsylvania and pass amendments that are harmful, not just to women, they, that's the one they showed you on the news, but they also changed voting rights in that amendment that they want passed. They changed the power of the governor to influence the legislation. And that interrupted our life because we think we feel safe, right? We're in California. This couldn't happen here. But what if some of those laws that are harmful, what if they become national laws? Then our lives will be interrupted. Because this scripture tells us that God invites us into a world and place that welcomes everyone in, doesn't push them away, doesn't hide them in their rooms, doesn't make them have to flee. That God wants us to become part of community, be welcomed back into wholeness, be part of what it means to be present with each other, to love one another, to be neighbors to each other. How do we let God interrupt us when we're feeling all alone in the midst of everything we see? When we see those floodwaters rising in Bangladesh and India? When we see the cows dying in Africa? When we hear the stories about women who are hurting right now? when we hear the stories of families that are having to mourn gun violence. How do we let God interrupt us in those moments? Let the Spirit in, inviting us 
to a different way, a better way, a way that Jesus demonstrates of wholeness, a way of healing, a way in which the community is brought back together and not separated, interrupted. I invite you this week to be interrupted, to feel the movement of the Spirit inviting you to a place and a people that you didn't know you needed to call, but all of a sudden that's the only person you can think of and you pick up the phone. An email that you send, a dog walk that takes you down a road and a neighborhood that you don't normally walk in. Invite the spirit to interrupt. To interrupt you so that you can interrupt that messaging in someone else's head that they don't see that they are enough that they can be whole that they can be loved let the spirit interrupt you this week amen